Hello and welcome to part 4, which is going to be the last video of this tutorial. So I'm back here in Maya and uh, I opened up that scene that we created in the first video. Um, so let me select the two uh, meshes here. Let's create a display layer. So click on that icon here. Double click on that layer to give it a name like text meshes and save that out. And then uncheck here the visibility. And now let's bring in our real flow mesh. So you have to uh, install the Maya to real flow to Maya plugin. Uh, once you have that installed, you have a new shelf here, uh, which some uh, real flow tools or uh, mail scripts. So if you have that installed and you can't see that shelf, go to window, go to settings, preferences, the plugin manager, and make sure somewhere down here. Um, that the realflow.mll is loaded and in my case it's turned on auto load. Okay, so once that's done, you click here on that icon on the right hand side which is import a bin mesh and if you click on that, uh, head uh, to your um, realflow folder uh, structure. <laughs> so um, in my case it was um, the morphing tutorial um, and uh, under the meshes folder you find the mesh that we just created so just select the first uh, bin file here and say load uh, yeah default settings here say create and there you go so we got that mesh uh, in our scene here um, I've got wireframe on shaded turned on so let me turn that off and um, I know we have 200 frames, so let's expand our timeline. So click here and say 200, hit enter. Okay, and from here on we are ready to uh, do some simple render settings. So let's open up the render options. So click on that icon here, our render settings. And first of all, um, under the common tab, I'd like to change our image size um, down here. I'm setting it to HD 720 and if you scroll down to the bottom you see here render options and uh, scroll down um, the default light is uh, enabled so let's disable that so uncheck it and then close that uh, window and then let's go into the hypershade so go to window rendering editors hypershade Okay, so in here, um, I'm going here to the metal ray materials, and I'm using a metal ray MIA material X passes. So click on that, and then double click here on that shader, so that opens up the attribute editor. In here, we are taking, like I said before, a simple preset. So click here on presets and uh, use the Chrome and say replace. Since we're having a, I would say, liquid metal uh, simulation, I think that works fine. So with that shader here, so just middle mouse and drag it onto your mesh so that the shader is assigned to our mesh. So let's close Hypershade. And uh, from here on, let's um, use an HDR, which means if we uh, open up our render settings here, uh, go to the indirect lighting tab takes a second here to uh, load that tab in for whatever reason um, and then uh, go to here under environment image based lighting say create okay that automatically creates a sphere where we can put in a longitude uh, latitude uh, HDR and I'm using um, an HDR so if I I click here in the attribute editor with that uh, HDR dome selected. Um, click here on that folder icon. That uh, brings you automatically to your source images folder. So in my case, I've put there an HDR. Uh, it's called studio underscore light underscore. You can read it here. So if you want to use the same HDR, um, I'm going to provide you uh, with a upload link. Yeah, so here's that uh, download link. So let me paste that in and make sure you type in exactly what you see here. So 
make sure um, yeah th that uh, this is a case sensitive that's what I guess um, and then once you are on that uh, page um, down here click on download and then put that HDR to your source images folder yeah so once uh, that's loaded in here um, we have to make some other uh, change, changes here in our uh, render settings. Let's uh, switch here to the quality tab and it's set to draft and like I said before we make it simple here um, set it from draft to production and uh, yeah let's close that window here um, I'd like to have my resolution gate turned on so click here on that little resolution gate icon and then uh, uh, find an angle that you like and then let's click here on render okay so I don't like uh, that the front of our text is that dark and I don't like to see uh, the HDR in our rendering so first of all let me minimize that window here and maybe we uh, say before we uh, minimize that window we just click here on that icon to save that image for comparison minimize that window and now let's um, with that uh, HDR sphere still selected go here to your attribute editor and go here to the render stats and turn off the primary visibility so that when we uh, render we won't see that HDR in the background anymore that's one thing so Let's just uh, open up our render window here and do another render. And you see uh, right here it works so we don't see that anymore. And now let's uh, try to rotate our um, HDR um, sphere so that you know the reflections are coming more from the front. So let's do some, some simple tweaks here. Um, so with that uh, sphere still selected um, let's switch here to the channel box click on that and then uh, maybe just uh, drag here in the viewport on that so that you can see the you know the translation and rotation functions here um, I think it would be a good idea to use uh, the IPR which is interactive photorealistic rendering so with a uh, you know click on that render view icon here that opens up the render window and then click here on IPR and then drag and drop a an area that you want to uh, render and no matter what you're changing here uh, this uh, updates not in real time but you can see uh, wh what's happening so let's uh, rotate our um, the HDR uh, sphere here in the background so I get it selected here and then I highlight rotate Y and then um, hovering over the viewport and then just middle mouse to rotate that okay maybe the other direction go back so I just uh, have it here uh, rotation Y 92.73 degrees and then let's uh, rotate Z so highlight rotate Z and, and then uh, uh, middle mouse and drag it yeah so I think that's okay so to stop the IPR click here on on, on that red stop sign icon I would say so to stop the IPR oops let me select my uh, HGR sphere again so my rotation Y is uh, 92 degrees and rotation Z is around about 25 degrees okay um, yeah let's uh, maybe switch to frame whatever 70 and do another render to see how this is looking here 
Okay, so I think I think that's that's all right. Um, yeah, just uh, whatever. Use your own uh, HDRs or uh, create some own light setups. Um, I think that's good enough. Uh, stay simple here. So let me close that uh, render window. And yeah, I'm just zooming out a little bit more. Okay. Now let's. Um, I just uh, changed the the uh, camera angle here. So let's open up the uh, render options again, and uh, go to the common tab. And then we have to tell Maya, okay, um, here under the f the file output, um, change it here from single frame to name dot number dot extension, and then uh, the frame padding. Let's set it to a three. Uh, I'm using the if format here and we have to change the frame range which is starting at frame one and then go into frame 200 hit enter and then uh, i think we are ready to render this out okay so let's close that and then uh, switch here from whatever you are at uh, to rendering and then go here to render and say batch render let's uh, check out the options here so yeah, th those are the default options. So let's just uh, batch render and close, which only closes uh, the batch render window here. And then if you wanna uh, see the progress of your rendering, just uh, click here on that script editor icon in the lower right corner. So click on that. And then you can see, okay, it's, it starts rendering frame one and so on. So let me pause the video and I'll be back when the rendering is done. All right, so I'm back here, my rendering is done. So to open that up, let's open up uh, the Windows Explorer. So I hit uh, Windows and E. Um, now let's head to our Maya projects folder. And in my case, morphing tutorial. And it's, uh, you find the, you know, all the images under the images folder. So make sure you open that uh, image sequence here with F check. Um, now let's uh, go here to file, open animation and just uh, click on frame one, say open and then let's cache this out. And then we let this uh, run through here. So this is a uh, 30 frames per second. It's looking, it's looking all right. It's looking all right. So we have um, yeah, I would say a little issue here. And um, that's what I've seen in our particle simulation um, in Reflow. Um, so when we turned off our uh, D-spline and uh, noise at uh, frame 125, um, you see uh, at exactly at that point or at that frame, there is a, I would say, yeah, it's not looking uh, smooth. So to to fix that problem, we have to re-simulate our particles and then remesh our um, uh, simulation here. Um, we don't have to simulate all the frames, so we might start at uh, frame 120. So I'm running out of time here in this uh, video, so I might record another one to fix that little issue here um, because this is not looking very very good. But altogether, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, it's always like playing around with all the settings in RealFlow to get familiar with, with that uh, software. Um, and you can, yeah, and, and I would say in a short amount of time, you can create some cool uh, liquid morphing effects here. All right, so see you.